This week on Quadriga, rigged elections, are Russian voters fed up? Special police units have been beating demonstrators and hauling them off to jail. Following mass protests over disputed parliamentary elections, the government is determined to prevent further demonstrations. Reviving Soviet-era rhetoric, officials say the security forces are protecting the populace from acts of provocation. Over the past few days, thousands of people have demonstrated against the apparent victory of Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party. While the party did suffer significant losses, it was still able to claim an absolute majority. Critics suggest that result could only have been achieved through massive vote rigging. Your host this week is Terry Martin. Hello and welcome. How extensive was the fraud in Russia's parliamentary elections? How far will the government go to crush dissent? And how will foreign governments and foreign investors respond to these developments? Those are some of the questions we're discussing this week on Quadriga. Joining Terry Martin in the studio, Sergei Sumleny is the Germany correspondent for the Russian Business Weekly Expert. He's also worked as a producer in the Moscow Bureau of the German broadcaster ARD. Alexander Ra is director of the Russia Eurasia program at the German Council on Foreign Relations. He's written several books about Russia, including biographies of Mikhail Gorbachev and Vladimir Putin. Gesine Dornblut is a freelance correspondent for German radio. She spent most of her career reporting on Russia and the former Soviet Union. Alexander, what do these elections tell us about Russia 20 years after the collapse of communism? That Russia is uh, still in a deep transition towards uh, real democracy, that uh, the leadership is not ready to accept uh, more democracy for uh, the people, and uh, it's getting uh, quite nervous uh, over the demonstrations which are coming no up now. I think that uh, Russia is somehow stuck in between uh, the old Russia, the old Soviet Union, the old habits, uh, the old totalitarian system, and something new, what certain parts of society want, but the government and the powers are not really moving Russia into this direction. What about the fraud in these elections? Let's look first of all at that. Uh, did this surprise you, the allegations of vote rigging, of, of massive manipulation? I think there had been a manipulation. I don't know to which extent. This has to be investigated. But um, again, I, I, I'm saying that there have been a, a fraud and so we will uh, hear more about this in the next uh, days and weeks to come. But at the same time, I would say that the results which we have seen are more or less objective, more or less objective. Uh, the uh, party of, of Putin uh, got less than 50 percent. I think this is a very realistic uh, result because a lot of people do not support this party anymore. And there were a lot of protest voters against this party. But at the same time, we've also seen that the liberal parties like Yabloka, who had the chance also to uh, win more than they had the 3% of elections failed. We have a new opposition which is not liberal. And this is uh, uh, quite uh, alarming from my point of view. The communists uh, got uh, 20%. They uh, stand for uh, a nationalization of, uh, of the Russian economy, a very dangerous partner for the West should they come to power. And we have uh, Zhirinovsky who is still alive, politically alive, with 13%. This is a nationalist. He won with one slogan, Russia for Russians. And then we have uh, the Justice Russia, a party uh, which also has uh, Mr. Mironov at its head, a former uh, uh, friend of, of, of Putin, whom I suspect, uh, maybe also he had a very interesting uh, campaign and also got a lot of uh, support from the voters, but uh, in a dangerous situation for, for the powers, for, the, for, for um, uh, United Russia, he may join them and unite with them in order to give him enough, uh, Putin and Medvedev, enough votes uh, in the parliament. So we'll be looking very murky, murky development. We'll look ahead to uh, how, what sort of constellations we might have moving forward there. But uh, thanks for summarizing what, uh, you know, basically the seven parties that people had to choose from in these, in these elections. Uh, but some parties were not allowed to, to stand in these elections. And that was one of the points that the, um, that the OSCE criticized, the Election Observer Organization for, uh, organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, criticized about this election that uh, some parties were not even allowed to stand. Uh, let me ask you, Sergei Somleni, uh, would you describe Russia right now as a functioning democracy 20 years after the collapse of communism? 
Well, uh, if you look at the amount of people who are protesting on the streets, uh, you can say that Russia is much more functioning democracy today than a week ago. Uh, because uh, much more people feel participated in the political process. Uh, that means uh, four years ago, one year ago, even six months ago, many uh, people from the middle class in Russia has got its middle class in the last 20 years, thank you, uh, high oil prices. Uh, Russia has got that middle class, but the middle class was uh, deep in uh, consumery. And they said, well, uh, politicians can do what they want, and we buy a new Ford car. Uh, in the last days, uh, there is some very interesting what happened. All that young people, middle-aged people, has suddenly felt, I should go and demonstrate. I have contacted with very many people who said to me, I have not been on any demonstrations since 20, since 20 years. But this day, I want to go and I want to demonstrate. It is a very important thing that people suddenly has understood there is something I feel uh, hurt in, there is something I can change. I was insulted by that fraud. Uh, very many people uh, think there was a huge fraud uh, during the election, and I want to protest against this fraud. And I, I cannot uh, agree that the Edina Russia, United Russia, has got 49 percent, according to all uh, results from the polling stations uh, where international and Russian independent observers has been presented and where that observers has not reported any or huge uh, fraud attempts. In all that polling stations, uh, the uh, participation was about 65 percent and United Russia result was from 25 up to 30 percent. In all other polling stations where there were not uh, observers or where the observers has reported massive fraud attempts, uh, their participation was 85 up to 97 percent, and the results for, for United Russia was 80 up to 97 percent. Okay, now this is an important point. Uh, Alexander suggested that the 50 percent uh, figure for United Russia may be realistic. You're suggesting that uh, it's not realistic. Uh, Sergei is talking about, uh, I, I would guess, if I interpret you correctly, about the election fraud in the in Moscow and St. Petersburg, where indeed the observers were. Not only. But, uh, I think that the, uh, I can't believe that Yedina Rasia or United Russia got 25 uh, percent in the whole country, and they had this massive fraud and brought it to 49. That's impossible. Don't, don't, it's impossible to manipulate votes this way. Everybody will tell you that. Don't. I think in the provinces, in the provinces, people, maybe you can accuse them of not, uh, not being politically informed, what unfortunately is true. But their people are going uh, without any pressure to vote for them because uh, for, for United Russia, because they think that they will press stability. That is, that is still the fact of life. It may change. Okay, so. we're not going to get this you know, <laughs> figured out today, unfortunately, just how extensive the fraud was. But it's, it's an interesting question. I, I want to just quote from the preliminary report from the Organization for and Security uh, Cooperation in Europe about the election. It described the election, says the elections were marked by the convergence of the state and the governing party, that these two things came together. It said the contest was slanted in favor of the ruling party, we're talking about United Russia here, Putin's party, uh, evidenced by the lack of independence of the election commission, the partiality of most media, and the undue interference of state authorities. Gazina, you know Russia very well. Are these allegations new? No, they are not new at all. And um, I think, uh, well, if they, they argued about uh, those two gentlemen, Sergei and Alexander, argued about the, the fraud on, on Sunday. But I think, uh, in fact, much more interesting is, about, is, is to ask uh, about the situation the weeks before the election. And I agree totally that there was no chance for, for a fair election. Um, and we should also talk about um, the Liberal Party Parnas from uh, Vladimir Rishkov and other leading opposition politicians. Um, they are those ones who would be the only ones that would be uh, called liberal in our uh, way of thinking. And um, they were even not registered, so they had no chance to take part in, in uh, the elections. I doubt that they would have got very many votes. But there, there were quite some hurdles to getting registered yeah, as a party. I think 7%. 7%, 7 exactly. Number of 45,000 um, signatures. I, I would like to know from you, Alexander, for example, if they uh, would have had the chance to participate, uh, how many percent would have uh, reached Parnas? 
First of all, I think it's of course idiotic not to have allowed them to participate because, uh, I mean, they are also part of Russia, definitely, and the powers shouldn't be afraid of them. These are decent people who want to uh, bring Russia closer to Europe. I think the problem was uh, some of the <laughs> very uh, radical rhetoric used by some of these leaders against Putin personally, therefore they were prohibited. But to answer your question, in my view, they would not get more percent uh, individually than uh, the three so-called liberal parties, or why not so-called? Yevlinsky's party is liberal, but Yevlinsky is the problem because he's there for mm -hmm. too long. Uh, they, they would not get uh, more than, than they got now. But uh, they are, the real problem is that they are not united. If all these liberal parties, including Yevlinsky's parties and uh, the former Prokhorov party and Parnas would unite in one uh, single party, without asking the Kremlin to do it, then I think they would have a chance to get over 77%. But this is not always the problem of the Kremlin that they are not united. This is also their individual problems. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're going to take a, a look now at some of the video that's been captured and, and circulated on the internet that uh, alleges to show um, the massive vote fraud. Even President Medvedev has admitted that there may have been uh, manipulation in certain ways. He said these 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 uh, allegations should be investigated. Now, critics say that the that the fraud was extensive and systematic. Apparently, some of the rigging was captured on video. This video was recorded in the city of Novokuznetsk. Independent election observers documented how ballot boxes there were already a third full before the election even began, stuffed with votes for United Russia. Another clip from Tula, south of Moscow, shows a Putin supporter with dozens of ballot sheets. Other voters prevent him from dropping them into the ballot box and inflating support for United Russia. This bag was confiscated as well. Inside was a whole stack of ballots marked in favor of United Russia. And at a Moscow polling station, the head of the Electoral Commission is caught secretly marking ballots under the table. Get out of here, get out, he says, after seeing the camera. It's unclear whether he actually cast those ballots or not. Sergey, uh, the examples we just saw appear really blatant, assuming that these are, are indeed authentic uh, uh, examples. Is election fraud, election rigging of the type we just saw, is that taken for granted in Russia? Uh, it is a long tradition in Russia to tolerate some things that the authorities do uh, and that things can be worse than things that Europeans could tolerate. And uh, during all last elections, that was the situation. And people said, uh, well, United Russia has, it is, uh, it's uh, clear and uh, legal 55%. Well, they fraud another 10% points, so it's okay. It doesn't change anything. But now people think, uh, and I think they're right, uh, that United Russia has uh, at least 30%, 25 to 30% of votes. And when they almost double that result, and I repeat, in Chechnya region, their uh, participation is that uh, region that is uh, uh, very dangerous for journalists to work, etc. Uh, their participation was about 97 percent, and which 90, just doesn't sound credible to you. Or? And 99 percent of that guys has voted for United Russia. In uh, other regions, uh, you can see the same situation as more people has voted. Uh, 90, 95% participation, uh, as much votes were given for United Russia. In Moscow, the best uh, results for United Russia were given in prisons, in hospitals, in military units, and in psychiatric uh, hospitals. Uh, the psychiatric hospitals. The psychiatric hospitals. And all of this exactly. challenges the veracity of, of, the, uh, of the claim that, that, the, that this vote was free and fair, of course. Um, you, t you mentioned the the media. You mentioned uh, journalists working in the caucuses. I want to know about um, about the media in general and about the people in Russia. Do they know about these allegations of the kind you've just described, uh, or is the media in Russia such that they play the government line, saying there may have been a couple of examples of manipulation, but it's nothing too bad, and we're going to investigate it. Don't worry about it. Do the Russian people know about these allegations to this extent? Let me ask you first, Gazina. No, I don't think that they know 
about the extent. At least they know that there are some protests, uh, but they know it only because Putin um, made a remark on this on the national broadcaster. Is but a discussion like we're having right now, uh, is this something you would see on Russian television? It depends on what Russian television, not on the nationwide. Uh, there is, for example, a small internet TV station, it's called Rain, and they are very critical and very open. And I would not exclude principally that there are some regional TV stations that would also show these kind of discussions, depending on whether the TV station belongs to the governor or to the mayor of the city or to whomever. But you will definitely not uh, see an open discussion on uh, on the first channel or on um, TV Russia. It is more uh, strange in the first channel uh, on the day of first demonstration where uh, about 6,000 uh, people has participated according to uh, Moscow authorities. Uh, the first channel has showed uh, a story about the demonstration after the elections and they have presented that demonstration as a demonstration of support for United Russia. Uh, but of course journalists First of all, the uh, media like newspapers and magazines are much more free in Russia than TV stations because TV stations belong to the state and print media are private normally. And the journalists from the print media, of course, they write about it. And, but don't forget about very strong power of Internet. Uh, today, uh, about over 60 major Russian cities uh, has made special special web pages where people are informed about the protest demonstrations in their in their in, in, in their in their cities in their regions a uh, very popular russian social network contacted something about uh, something like facebook uh, in other world um, they have created a page uh, for demonstration in Moscow. That page has got on the first day over 1,000 postings and uh, the social network had to change the technical protocols because technical protocols did not allow it, uh, a page to, to, to show more than 1,000 postings. Is the government trying to uh, close down some of these sites? I understand yeah, there's, right. there's massive intimidation of the social networks that are, that are promoting these messages. Anyway, all this brings us to the demonstrators, of course. The, the demonstrators, demonstrators who are out on the streets, many of them have been arrested. There have been several hundred arrests so far. Many of the people who have been arrested have been thrown in jail. They claim they've been treated very roughly, uh, inhumanely in some cases. There are lots of allegations of that going on. There's every indication that some protests will continue on the street. I'd like to ask you, Alexander, who are these uh, protesters? Who are these demonstrators? What do they want and how is the government going to deal with them? Maybe I would uh, answer very bluntly. These are basically young people born after communism, not afraid of the powers, people who are traveling to the West, who speak foreign languages, who don't want to live like their parents or their grandparents. But we should not forget one thing. Russia had already 20 years ago a revolution. August Putsch and many demonstrations of a much wilder scale than we have seen it uh, in the past days. And what happened? Two, two years after this demonstration stopped, and if you today ask uh, people in Russia, Appealing uh, polls, 90% of Russians all in the country are saying that they would have supported the, uh, the, the putschists during the August uh, putsch and not uh, the liberals. And uh, this is uh, also an alarming sign. Now, 20 years ago, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev was still playing an important role in, in Russia. Uh, to, to a degree, people associate him with the collapse of the Soviet Union, however. He has been commenting on, on the current election results, been very outspoken. Let's hear what he's had to say. The authorities should annul the results and declare new elections. That's the clear position of Mikhail Gorbachev. The former Soviet leader goes even farther, calling for a change in Russia's political system. Ignoring public opinion discredits the authorities, he says, and destabilizes the situation. Difficult decisions need to be made, he says, but the people have a right to know what their sacrifices are for. First of all, do the people in Russia even listen to what Mikhail Gorbachev says today? No, they don't. Gorbachev is the politician that enjoys in Russia as less support as any politician could have, maybe 0.001%. Uh, and that's because many Russians feel that he is responsible for the collapse of the Soviet yes. Union and they're nostalgic for the security. Okay, that's the basic argument we hear there. But he is saying that the elections should be repeated. They, they should, we need to have fresh elections. Uh, is that 
claim going to be made again and again? Are we going to hear those calls continued? Probably they will hear it on, in the streets and demonstrations, but the question is whether the powers will apply to this. Uh, but on the other hand, if, uh, if there will be some, uh, some court decisions, I think that the courts are not Soviet-like. Maybe, maybe the, the whole fraud, as uh, Sergei described, of 25% uh, of fraud uh, connection with uh, United Russia, if this will come up, then the, uh, Medvedev and Putin, of course, will come under immense pressure, uh, either to, um, to repeat their elections or to postpone the presidential elections. Which would do in March? It's a, it's a one, one big problem, as I see it, is that the, why is there fraud in Russia? Because the authorities are telling governors um, and uh, local leaders uh, that they will punish them if they deliver a wrong uh, or a too low result in the election for the party of power. This and is idiotic, because that, this is an invitation for uh, local politicians to falsify the election because they are afraid of losing their jobs. Sounds like a very dangerous development. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has said that the elections in Russia were neither free nor fair. Um, the Russian president has responded by saying that, uh, the, that the, the demonstrations in the streets are being promoted, encouraged, instigated perhaps by the U.S. This again all sounds like Soviet era uh, developments. It, does this not all seem to discredit the, the, the Russian government in a, in, a, in a very strong way, Gazine? I mean, is it, in the people yeah. on the streets who are, who are <clears throat> saying that these elections need to be repeated, is, it, does this not have the potential to boil over into something big? Um, I think very much depends on whether Putin is able to um, put distance between himself and the party um, United Russia, because so far people um, still, many people, I don't know if the majority, but many Russians still like Mr. Putin. They have uh, still in mind the old pictures of Mr. Yeltsin, who was as a president very weak and, and ill, and they have this, um, yeah, relatively young, strong man who even uh, yeah, is able to 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 uh, play ice hockey, and yeah, fly yeah, fishing, and like this, and hunt tigers. And, and, and to us, it seems ridiculous, but but Russians, uh, due to this trauma with Mr. Yeltsin and the chaos from the 90s, they still like it, and uh, so I do not exclude that that most of the people really would support Mr. Putin. So within the country, we see a, a, a merger of the, of the United Russia Party and the state to some degree. We see the, a collusion, perhaps, of local authorities who are in, uh, eager to continue to get their subsidies from Moscow or whatever to get the patronage. Uh, what about foreign governments and foreign investors? How are they going to respond to all of this? Is this does this not put Russia into a, a corner um, that it makes it very unattractive for foreign investment? Foreign investments are cared about margins, not about uh, the political system. As long as uh, they are allowed to participate in uh, Russian economic growth, they're happy with any government we have in Russia. But if the democratic institutions are not in place, and, you know, leaving freedom of assembly aside, uh, the independence of the judiciary, for example, and, and the rule of law, uh, does this not make it an unattractive investment place? This is a Western point of view, excuse me. Because look at what's happening is in China. Do they have a democracy? People still in, invest like crazy in this country because you get these margins. Russia is not the only country in the post-Soviet space uh, which has uh, only a half-democratic system. But it's still not the totalitarian system like in the Soviet Union. There is, of course, uh, also some new developments uh, possible. But Ukraine, Ukraine is moving in the Russian direction, not to the European Union. Belarusia, a lot of investors are eyeing this country as well. Kazakhstan, uh, 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 Turkmenistan, countries where Chancellor Merkel is going in order to invest more and more and more in the financial crisis. So Sergei is right. I mean, you have uh, a realistic, real political view of the business elites who maybe think that these countries, if they don't become too liberal, are, uh, are even better for investment, better for stability, better as, 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 as partners in energy resources, in energy alliances. <laughs> okay, for a certain continuity there. Final question, we only have a minute left. Uh, will Vladimir Putin be president again in 2012? You're asking me? Yes. Yeah, I think he has uh, no, no, no rival. I, no, I don't think that he will be there for 12 years, but now he will win, yes. In the first or the second round? In the first. In the first round. Okay. Gazina, what's going to happen to the protesters? Are we going to see protests continuing in Russia under these conditions? I think they will continue certainly, definitely a few days or maybe even a few weeks, but I 
doubt they will grow. Sergey, do you see any hopes for um, democratic reforms, these institutions that we've been talking about? Um, any chance that they're going to be strengthened in the direction of democracy, or, or is, are we going to see a continued erosion of democratic institutions in Russia? Oh, well, the, the main problem of the protesters is they are not united. They don't have any leader uh, they could trust, all of them. So that's why I assume next week we will see some demonstrations. Then uh, New Year Eve will come, everybody, everyone on vacation called. Maybe in March we will have another wave of demonstrations. Afraid we're going to have to leave it there. We'll certainly be keeping a close eye on it. I want to thank you all for being with us today. Sergei Sumleni, Alexander Ra, and Gazina Don Blut. And I want to thank you all for tuning in. Do join us again next week on Quadriga and check us out on the internet at dwworld.de.